What's up, cool cat? So I don't know what's happening. I don't know if it's this light that's coming in, but my face is very tan and glowy and we are here for it. So anyways, let's get after it. So I am so late, first of all, because, see, I wanted to put it on my Instagram, but there's like 90 seconds and then I have to like talk really, really fast and I can't get everything in. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to make a YouTube video about it. So I can go in detail, take my time, say everything I got to say. Um... So anyways, I'm very late to this because I did my little four weeks of like, or was it six weeks? I don't even know. Four or six weeks of my little like cutting calories to try to get my body fat percentage a little lower. I remember I had my 2% goal um, and I took this scan on March 10th. It is now April 4th. So <laughs> whoops, we're late, but it's okay. Here we are. So first I'm going to compare my one that I did at the start of my little, um, calorie cutting and that was April 2nd and then I took this one March 10th so yeah what is that like five weeks because there's like four short weeks in February I don't know whatever within that time frame okay so and then I want to talk about because I realized my very very first body fat scan when I got here to this base that I'm at um was in March of 2022 so i have a year of data so that's awesome so we're really going to talk about that i'm just going to skim through the first half real quick because you know i was sharing all of it all the food and just everything i was doing so i think it's just kind of like cheeky not to share the results because it's like oh what are you hiding you know what i mean which is nothing i've just literally just been so busy and consumed in life and work and k3 and you know what i mean <clears throat> so anyways okay so my weight loss was four pounds in like I said from February 2nd to March 10th four pounds really wasn't great I feel like I could have done better um there are no excuses um I just didn't do as good as I should have done you know I had my birthday week I had valentine's week <laughs> so no excuses okay no excuses but that you know what I mean like I could have done better I just chose not to so whatever we're good four pounds is four pounds so we're gonna take that win Okay, body fat percentage was 24.6 and then it went down to 23.8. So like almost a percentage, which I wanted to get to 22. Remember that was my goal and I didn't hit that goal either. But again, what are we going to do? It's not the end of the world. It is what it is. We're going to move on. We did the best we could and cool. All right, now we know. Um, And so, so yeah, so body fat mass the mass of body fat that I had was 32.6. So out of the 132 pounds, basically 32.6 of it is fat that my body is carrying. Right. So then, um, on the, in March, when I did it, like the five, six weeks after it was 30.7. So it's actually like three pounds. 30. No, it's two pounds. <laughs> So two pounds of the four pounds of weight loss was fat and then two pounds of it was muscle, which is very sad. So yeah, I mean, it is what it is. This just goes to show you like it's not always going to stay linear. It's not always going to be perfect. Things are going to come up. It's not the end of the world. Just do the best you can. You know, it is what it is. Um, so that was definitely not the goal. Um, so, you know, we're just gonna, I'm back up to maintenance now. So we'll just see what we do next. Um, anyways, so like I said, what I wanted to really, um, compare was my March 2022 to March 2023 which is crazy okay so um this is kind of like my year I really think like I started my postpartum like routine and consistency and kind of like weight loss journey I guess I don't know what else to call it it's like ugh. um but when I got here in March you know because obviously I had K3 in June of 21 and then after my six weeks, I was cleared to exercise. And so I just started walking and doing like some things at the house and stuff. Cause obviously I had K3 at home. Um, and I took him to the gym sometimes, but it didn't really work. He wasn't one of those babies that just slept in the corner. He, the second he heard noise, he was up. So I really could just like walk with him or do like kettlebell circuits in the living room kind of thing. Um, so I don't, I mean, it was better than nothing. You know what I mean? But I don't really consider that the start of it because I wasn't consistent with it. I was like all over the place. I was in the middle of PCSing, obviously we're moving from the UK to Florida. So I was in the middle of PCSing. I had like, I wasn't going to try and 
pressure myself to be like, oh my God, I'm on a program. I have to work out three, four times a week. I literally just did it whenever I could and worked it however I could. And so once I got here and I got in a better routine, you know, like got in a house and, you know, K3 got in a good routine and we did, started doing our thing and then he got into daycare. Like I was able to really put myself on a better, more structured program because if you're not on a structured program, you're just kind of kind of be all over the place. And it's great because like I said, something is better than nothing. But if you want to see real results and real progress and real like you have to be committed to it and you have to be on some kind of structured program. You can't just be like, I'm going to work out three days this week and then two days next week and then the next week I'm working out five. So that makes up for the other two weeks. Like it doesn't work that way, you know? Um, so, so yeah. So I would say this is like pretty much kind of like the start to it. I know I, when I first, first, first did it, um, was way back, like at my six week mark, when I started going back into the gym, I know I did a body fat scan and I think I was like, I was like in the one fifties in weight and my body fat, I think was like 38%. Like it was pretty high. It was like 38%. I think, um, I have it on my phone. I should have looked it up before I did this, but, um, I'll put it in the notes what I get, but, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was like 152 pounds and it was like 38% body fat. That's like six weeks. I just got cleared. I went to the gym for the first time and did my scan. Um, like my stomach was still very soft. Like you could push in my stomach. It was so weird after I had K3, I could like push in my belly and like there was no end. Like it just went, it was so weird. I've never like felt anything like that. I felt like something was wrong. I don't know. It was so weird to me, but, um, yeah, so it was like at that phase. So that's the very, very, very beginning. Um, but like I said, I did, wasn't doing anything consistently from that point until I got here in March. So I can't, I don't really count that as anything other than me just trying to survive and maintain my life. Um, so anyways, okay, cool. So I did write some notes down because I'm not going to try and do math, you know, right here because that's embarrassing. But, um, so body fat percentage. So we started at focus. Oh, 32.1% body fat. When I got here in March, that's where I was. So at my six week mark, when I had K3, I got tested. I think I was like 38. So by the time I got here, I was 32. And that was just from like, trying my body just kind of doing its own thing kind of thing and like centering itself and me going on my walks and me trying to eat the best I can and, and things like that. That's just what happened with that. So then now I am currently, so a year later, 23.8% body fat, which is awesome. That's 8% body fat this year, which is huge, huge, huge. Okay. So when we think about like the weight that you lost when you think eight percent body fat you're like oh what's eight percent body fat you know what I mean <laughs> doesn't sound like anything well in reality it is okay because it's 18 and a half pounds which is huge you know so I started March it was March 29th so but it was 147.4 pounds and now my most recent one that I did in March 10th was 128.8 that's like crazy you know what I mean? Um, and I'm five one for like reference. So that's a lot of weight on me, you know? Um, so yeah, that's just huge. I'm just like very proud of it. And I'm proud that I stayed consistent and I trusted the process and I didn't do any quick things. And I'm going to tell you how I did this too. Like everything I've done this entire year, no, like just real what I've done, you know? Um, and yeah. So anyways, okay. So if we look at the fat mass, so Last year, the fat that was on my body was 47.3 pounds. I had 47.3 pounds of fat. That's when you look at my weight. So 47.3 was fat. Then like, you know, 90 was muscle. And then this was water and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so how much fat I had. So now my body is carrying 30.7 pounds of fat, which is wild. That's literally like 17 pounds. So out of the out of the weight that I lost, it was mostly all fat. And that's the goal, you know? I did lose a pound and a half. Wait, I know I wrote this down here, muscle. A pound, 1.8 pounds, almost two pounds of muscle. I did lose 1.8 pounds of muscle, which isn't the goal, obviously, but if you're in a calorie deficit, you're gonna have to accept that because how do you build muscle? By eating enough calories and stressing your muscles enough to adapt and grow and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So if you're not eating enough calories, it's really hard to put on muscle. Um, so that's another reason why you can't be like, I want to put on muscle, but I also want to lose fat. And then I also want to gain strength. And then I also want to run 18 miles next month. Like you can't have, you have to separate your goals. So at first, like if you want to lose fat, I would say do that first. Now there are a few different ways you can like figure out what goals you want to do first. And I say, if you're not in a healthy body fat percentage, you need to focus on losing the body fat first, 
Obviously, you can still strength train. You should still strength train, um, but your priority shouldn't be putting on muscle because what's going to happen is you're going to need to eat more calories, you're going to put on muscle, and you're going to put on more fat. So if you are not in healthy body fat percentage, I recommend starting with the fat loss goal first, and then you can go into like a building muscle goal, but that's a different topic. Um, so anyways, yeah, so I did lose a couple pounds of muscle, which isn't what I wanted, but it is what it is. You know, I was mostly in a calorie deficit. I this whole year. I wasn't in a calorie deficit the entire time. And I'm going to talk about that later, but for the most part, and I just spit for the most part, I was in a calorie deficit. So it's expected. It's not that big of a deal. I'm still super strong. I'm much stronger than I was a year ago, 100%, but strength doesn't equal muscle. And that's something we need to understand. Um, so yeah, anyways, um, okay. Cool, cool, cool. So what else did I want to talk about? Oh, the visceral fat. Now this is huge. So visceral fat is like it um it measures the fat that is like surrounding all your organs. So like your intestines and your heart and like all your organs inside. It's basically belly fat is what it is because obviously where are your organs? Hello. So it's a little bit of both, but that's what it means. Um, so you want your visceral fat, belly fat, to be very low, obviously. I mean, not like you don't need to be like skin body fat you know what I mean abs ripping out like that's not the point either um but you need to be like at a healthy I should say body fat percentage belly fat um because if your organs are surrounded by a lot of belly fat they're gonna struggle to pump and do what they need to do to thrive to for you to survive you know um so that one's really, really huge to me. And I'm just like so excited really about that number. So my visceral fat when I first got here last March was nine at a level nine. So they rate it um, like when you get to 10, 10 and above is considered high. Um, and then anything like below the 10 marker is like lower. So I was at nine. So I was literally almost there to like high. Um, and now last month it is at five from nine to five. That's huge. So those are just really, really important numbers to think about. You know, your body fat percentage, your visceral fat, like those are really the most important. Your um, your BMI is a good indicator of if you're healthy-ish. Um, it's just, it varies, you know, obviously because muscle weighs a lot. But um, yeah, so those are just two very important numbers that you really need to worry about. And the scale is important, obviously. We're not going to ignore it, but it's not the most important because what do we want? We want our organs to be healthy. We want our body to be healthy. We don't want to just be like, a low scale weight, you know, like, what does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. A low scale weight means nothing. <laughs> um, so yeah. So, um, I want to kind of want to talk about like what has happened this year, like the process of this and blah, blah, blah. So basically from March until now, there has been like, I can't even count how many weekend trips. Like I visited my sister a bunch of times. She came to visit me. We had like boat weekends, just celebrating life, fun, food, alcohol, Lots and lots of those weekends happened, okay? So I'm not gonna like sugarcoat that and lie, um, which is probably why, I mean, 18 pounds, if someone was seriously consistent for an entire year, they would have lost more than 18 pounds, obviously. Um, so I just wanna tell you how I did it and how I was comfortable doing it. Now, if you're not comfortable with it going so slow, then you're gonna have to sacrifice some things, you're gonna have to get rid of some things, and you're gonna have to understand that it's gonna be harder. You know what I mean? But that's just your decision, and it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way to do it. I prefer to do it this way. Um, so anyways, yeah, um, vacations, uh, like weekends away, there was lots of those happenings. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't like just strict and very clean and all this stuff, no. Like, so um, we're not gonna front on that. Um, but some things that were very consistent, I was very consistent with was 10 K steps almost every single day for the last year. I mean, probably, I wish I, I probably can tell on my app, but pretty much every single day I had 10 K steps or more. Um, so I went through phases of a calorie deficit and phases of maintenance. Okay. I was never in a surplus, but I went through phases where I was eating fewer calories. And then I went through phases where I was just back to maintenance, just because like I said, I would have like trips and weekends and whatever things that I wanted to do life experiences holidays um so I would go through phases of like okay for the next six weeks I'm gonna be in maintenance and I'm gonna enjoy this and it was also like a mental break too um 
And then I would go through, okay, for the next six weeks, I'm going to be in a calorie deficit. So I'm going to cut my calories by, and I never did it in an aggressive fashion. I literally cut my calories by maybe like 300 calories. Like I wasn't cutting them by like five or 700 calories, you know? Um, so it was a very moderate calorie deficit when I was in one. Um, but yeah, it still works. So you just have to accept how fast you want to do this, you know, and how, how much you want to give up while you're doing it. Um, okay. So seven hours of sleep pretty much every single night. Um, that is a lie because from March to July, I remember the day we sleep trained K3, July 6th. But from March to July, I was waking up at least two times a night with him. He would go down at seven, then wake up at 11, then wake up at three, then wake up at six for the day. Like clockwork every single night from March to July 6th. And then finally July 6th, we just sleep trained and we let him cry it out. And I wish we would have done it sooner, but whatever. So then from July 6th, I started getting seven hours of sleep every single night. And that changed the game for me. I'm telling you, like my body was able to recover and I felt this happening inside. Like I felt my body changing so fast from the second I started getting seven hours of sleep every night. It's insane. So anyways, um, and then I worked out three to four times a week, every single week. I pretty much didn't miss that there may be no that's probably a lie there had to be a couple of weeks where I probably only got like two workouts in um but I don't know because I always like for example this weekend I know I'm going out of town on Thursday afternoon I have four workouts to do this week so normally I would do like Monday Tuesday skip Wednesday Thursday Friday but because of like you know just being out of town you know the chances that I might not be able to make it to the gym I'm gonna work out Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday so I can all, I normally manipulate my workouts to still fit in the week even if I'm out um but there was probably a few weeks like I know when we went to Mexico I think I only worked out like once and we were gone for a week so there you know it's it wasn't every single week, but it was most every single week. I maybe, maybe missed a couple of weeks. So that was very, very consistent. Three to four, 45 to 60 minute workouts a week. Um, and I walk every day. So I go for a 20 minute walk every single day, even on the weekends, every day. Um, I think that kind of ties into the step one though. Um, and then another one that was huge is I started tracking my protein again. So like really being conscious of how much protein I'm eating and not just kind of eating um, my normal meals. I mean, they were my normal meals, but I was more actively tracking that protein number. Like I was like, okay, this has 30. So now this has 20. So now I'm up to 50. So now I need the, you know what I mean? Like I was very, I was very consistent with it, even on the weekends. And on the weekends I used to struggle, which is my next one, um, about getting my protein because I was choosing other foods. Okay, so 100 plus grams of protein every single day, Monday through Sunday, every single day. Um, again, there was probably some weeks that I didn't do it every single day, but for the most part, it was every single day. Um, and then the number one thing that I honestly think just kind of like propelled my progress is cleaning up my weekends. Because from March to, again, July, about the time that K3 um, started sleeping, um, I was... I had so much more energy, you know, so I had, I was able to like do so much more because I had seven hours of sleep at night and it's amazing what that can do for you. I felt like a completely different person. So I was able to structure my workouts. I was able to plan my workouts more efficiently and it was just so much better. But anyway, it's not the point. Um, yeah, so I, um, from about March to, yeah, like I would say July, I think I, um, I was just kind of like eating the best that I could. I didn't really care what I was doing on the weekends. If I wanted to go out to eat, I would go out to eat. If I wanted to have a cocktail or five, I would. If I want, you know what I mean? Like that was kind of the situation I was in. And then from July to about now, I've been way, way more consistent on the weekends and just like still enjoying what I want, but not being an asshole about it. You know what I mean? Like whenever I go out to eat, if I want one cocktail, I have one cocktail or I'll have a glass of wine. Like I'm just doing better at making those choices because five drinks is not worth, that to me it's not worth feeling that crap the next day it's not worth like just everything you know putting all that those calories in my body it's just not worth the feeling really of the aftermath is what it is for me like after I drink like that I feel like crap the next day my next day is way less productive because I just feel like crap and I can feel it in my body so yeah I've just really cleaned up my weekends um no fried foods or I don't want to say no because I probably have had I have had french fries and stuff but like um I probably like a couple weeks out of the last June to March, April, Jesus, April, July, out of the last like eight months, I've probably had fried food maybe like a couple times 
within a couple of weeks like it's not on the regular menu anymore and it used to be like i used to go out to the restaurant and just order like the that greasiest most fattening thing and now i'm just kind of like i've just learned to like why am i doing that and i was doing that i think because i was so deprived during the week like i was trying to be so perfect during the week that the weekends came around i was like oh this is my chance to do it so cleaning up my weekends also i think allowed for more leeway during the week which allowed me to like add a couple of extra like funner foods that I want that have like no nutritional value but that like are, are fun for me and I enjoy eating it allowed me to do that which then kind of as a counter balanced my weekend out on its own because I wasn't so deprived come the weekend because I'll have like a piece of chocolate every night before bed or I'll have like a cup of kettle corn with like the chocolate on it and like you know what I mean like those small things really help me not have to go all in and feel so deprived on the weekend so i just cleaned up my weekend um within the last eight months and i think really that has propelled my progress a lot um and yeah and just not working out so much like i used to work out like five six days a week like it was wild and then um yeah just kind of tailoring it back to three to four times a week and really really focusing on making those three to four workouts as hard and intense as i can and yeah that has really helped so um yeah, moral of this is just basically I just want to express that if you are sorry, I'm itching. I'm like sunburn. Um, if you are, um, you know, trying to go through some kind of weight loss phase or weight loss journey or whatever, you need to ask yourself what your goals are, why your goals are that way. You know, those are a couple of things you really need to ask yourself. Why? Why do you want to do this? Because that's what's going to keep you motivated to keep going, you know, and if it's because, oh, I want to look at a bathing suit for the summer, that is is gonna fly out the window whenever an opportunity comes and it's like do you want fried chicken or do you want to get a I don't freaking know a baked chicken you know what I mean that's gonna drive that decision because you're gonna be like I don't care that much what I look like in a bathing suit like that's not motivating you know what I mean I mean I don't know maybe some people do but to me it's not like I could care less so it's like that's not motivating to me so you have to find what is motivating to you why you want to start doing this and then the next i think the most important question is are you going to be patient enough to do it slowly you know more sustainably you don't have to go so extreme or are you going to quit when it's not working fast enough so that way you need to take a more extreme approach but then you need to also ask yourself can you sustain this extreme approach and ask yourself what you're gonna to have to give up to do that you know what i mean like do you make a list of things that are like, no, I want to enjoy life and I'm going to enjoy this, 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 and this. And then, you know, if you can pull back a little bit, because at some point you also have to just grow up if you have these goals and just like, you know, cut the bullshit and like do what you got to do. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that like you need to be so deprived and so restricted and you need to do it for an entire year. You know, there's nothing wrong with being in a calorie deficit for an entire year. You don't need like a diet break, you know, after you've been doing it. Because most of us, let's be honest, aren't consistent for an entire year. So for you to say you need a diet break isn't true because you haven't even been doing it really for a year. You may have been in like a diet mindset, but you haven't been dieting for a year. But anyways, even if you are super consistent and you have been on it, you don't need a diet break after a year like you can continue doing your thing um as long as you know you're eating proper food to nourish your body and fuel your body um but anyways yeah you really just need to ask yourself um what you're willing to give up you know and your goals have to align with that with what you're willing to give up if your goals are to lose 20 pounds in three months and but you're saying that you're not going to give up drinking on the weekends you're not going to give up um, you're not going to give up your ice cream at night. You're not going to give up whatever, you know what I mean? Then your goals and what you're saying aren't aligning and that doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? You're just setting yourself up for failure. So you need to figure that out and then that's how you can execute a proper plan. Okay. So I hope that was interesting. <laughs> Um, it's very interesting for me. I love looking at these numbers. So anyways, I just wanted to really just say that it is possible to do it in a slow, sustainable way. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to go fast. And you just have to outweigh what it is that you're willing to do. Okay, that's it. Bye.